When you think about buying geofencing software, a plugin to bring into your app so that you can target customers based on their location, what you have to understand is that not every company that's creating these tools create them equal. At Pulse, we put a lot of work into the way that we understand the device, its sensors, and how we accurately plot customers going inside and outside of micro and macro fences. In the next few minutes, I'm gonna show you everything that you need to know, the boxes that you need to check to make sure you're selecting the correct vendor when it comes to geofencing. Let's get into it. So first up, we have make sure the tool can create geofences of any shape or size. Now, what I mean by that is a lot of our competitors out there, they only allow you to create these big old circles that can, in some cases, be the size of a city. And you may want to geofence you know, the area around your business, or you may want to go down to a very specific uh, room within the building, or you may just want to geofence a competitor. And whilst there are some use cases for you know, geofencing a, a whole city, and certainly uh, in a tool like Pulsate, you can do that, you need to be able to go from the, the macro and zoom right down into the micro location uh, of that user. And what I mean by that is being able to go all the way down to 20 meters of accuracy with geofencing and in a way that doesn't require you to create circles um, around specific locations. Because let's face it, not every location, and in fact, most of them are not circles. Um, so being able to draw polygons and to draw you know, triangles and rectangles and any other uh, shape that you can create with a polygon is a very useful feature to be able to target just the building or just that section of that road that you wanna be able to track users that show up at those, those locations or to engage with them in some way so the tools that allow you to size up and size down and get into very um, particular shapes very, very useful, and this is an absolute must when selecting uh, software in this space. Number two, uh, make sure that you can monitor for many, many, many locations at once. Believe it or not, there are some providers on the market that only allow you to geofence 20 places at one time. Not much use. So with tools like Pulsate uh, and others, you can do unlimited locations at the same time without having to worry about um, being at, you know, right down at 20. Come on, you know, 20 is not really gonna cut it. Chances are you have a lot more than 20 locations and you have more than 20 competitors. Number three, make sure that you support, or this provider supports reverse uh, geo-encoding. And what I mean by this is that you, as a business, can supply the provider with a list of addresses and they, of your locations, and this provider has an ability to turn them back into latitude and longitude and thereby automating the creation of all of the fences that are your own, own locations. Um, number four, it's kind of a little bit similar to three, but it, it's more um, concerned with the competition. Make sure that you can bulk import all of your competitors at once into the tool. So let's say, for example, your main competitor is Starbucks. You should be able to automatically, and in a polygonal way, geofence all of the Starbucks instantly within North America or within 10 kilometers of downtown Atlanta, Georgia. Can the tool do this? Make sure you tick that one off too. And with the bulk importing. Number five, I've said before, geofences are nothing to do with beacons. So your provider should be able to do all of this by integrating a plugin into your mobile app. And the smartphone has some of the most sophisticated sensors way more than an eye beacon, so you should require absolutely no hardware at all. Number six, it should work passively, meaning that you're not reliant on your user having the app open. Again, believe it or not, some of our competitors require you to have your app open as the user enters the geofence. Pretty unlikely that your customer is going to have the app open on their phone in a very helpful way for you at the time they show up in your location. It's about passively engaging with customers as they show up for you in the real world. So by passively, I mean the app can be in the background. The screen can be turned off. I don't mean powered off. I mean the screen is dulled. It's in their pocket. Maybe the app is even terminated. A lot of people in iOS, they kill apps out of the app drawer because they think it's saving battery. Of course, it's not. You may not know it, but it doesn't save any battery. All those apps are suspended. But people do kill those apps. 
which means that your app SDK for doing geofencing needs to be able to restart in the background whenever they cross that geofence. So just make sure that you tick that one off and number six can be done by your geofencing provider as well. Number seven, G uh, GPS is something that you should use um, really very little or not at all if you can help it. As you may know, GPS is one of the most expensive battery consuming radios that are on board smartphone devices. So it should be used very sparingly and it really should not be used in the background at all. Again, a lot of geofencing solutions, they're a little bit lazy, they're a little bit blunt in the way they've been instrumented and they run GPS pretty much all the time in the background, which makes geofencing from a developer standpoint, very, very easy to do, but absolutely horrific on the battery life of your customers, meaning they will realize that this app is the drain on their battery and they will delete it. So easy to implement, but you run into problems very, very quickly with battery drain. So battery drain, um, you know, it can happen from with seven by excessively using GPS, but also on number eight, we can cause excessive battery drain just because of our network calls. How noisy we're being back to the server and the way we're you know, managing various services of the device. We've seen some are instrumented better than others. Number nine, it should also provide better reliability and accuracy than the default system operating system APIs for doing geofencing. So you may not know it, but geofencing is actually built in to iOS and Android by default. Technically, you don't need to hire anyone to do geofencing and as a developer, you could instrument it yourself. But with the default system APIs, you're talking about very big locations, only circles and to several hundred meters of accuracy, which may not meet your use cases. In addition to that, onto point number 10, there are some problems with the default system uh, operating system APIs, which trigger fences from miles away, trigger many fences at once. Some of these things haven't been fixed as well, right up to some of the most recent versions of these operating systems. I'll leave a link below. If you're interested in learning more about 10, check out my recent book, contribution to book, um, called Beacon Technologies, which was published by APRESS, where I discuss this issue at length. Of course, it's out of the scope of today's video. But do make sure that when you're selecting a provider that they have deep knowledge in this area and they're not just a thin veneer on top of the default geofencing system APIs because these ones, they're kind of a little bit screwy in the way they work. And if your provider is just relying on that to build their service, they're not really much of a product anyway. And chances are they don't really know much about this stuff. So it's tricky to get right, but choosing the right vendor and checking off these 10 points will ensure that you avoid battery drain, you get great accuracy, you can draw your polygons, you can do this in the background and you avoid um, some of the aforementioned issues. So thanks very much for tuning in. I'm Patrick Letty, see you guys next time.